The Wall Street Journal recently did a story about this growing trend that we were talking about earlier of young people choosing the skilled trades over college, even calling Gen Z the tool belt generation. The article featured Father Judge High School in Philadelphia, which is an all-male Catholic school. And we gave them a call. And joining us now are the welding program instructor, Mr. Joe Williams, and 18-year-old senior, Marcos, from their shop class at Father Judge. Hi there. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hi, uh, how are you? Great to have you both Hi. here. So you've opted not to go to college, Marcos, I hear, and instead are yeah. pursuing a trade. Why did you make this choice? Uh, I made this decision for a couple of reasons. One was when I was in grade school, I was always in like the honors classes. Even at Judge, I was in the honors classes. But studying, it took a while for me to memorize stuff. I just was never the best memorizer. So it came hard. And then looking at high school and even college, I wasn't sure how that was going to go. And I thought about that, like for my future. But then I came to judge at an open house and I saw the welding program for the first time and I saw an opportunity to be successful without having to go to college. Also, I always thought um, student debt, um, student loans for college, that that was going to be a lot. I didn't want to go into debt and I saw welding as a way to get past that. Another reason is because I'm very hands on. I love building. I love creating and welding was a way I could make that into a career and be successful as someone that went to college and be making the same as them or even more. So you enjoy welding. You actually enjoy welding. Yeah, you like it. Yeah, I do. That's, that's, that's a big bonus. Mr. Williams, tell us about this program and why it was started. Well, this, this program was started because there was a, a definite need and a deficit of, of, of welders. There are so many people retiring, but there's not enough people to fill the void and all the blue collar jobs. So the archdiocese had a couple of meetings and they thought about bringing the trades to the archdiocese. So they chose welding. And then in, in a matter of, of months, they decided to build a welding program here at Father Judge. And this is a three year program, two hours every day for three years. These young men come to my class. We learn how to read blueprints. We articulate blueprint symbols. We learn how to draft symbols. We talk math, we talk ling language, we, we do things on and out of class. We teach them soft skills, we teach them interview skills. So my, my class is just not a, a program of welding. I teach these young men how, how to be men and, and what the real world has to offer to them when they graduate, like bills, like uh, 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 introducing yourself, shaking a man's hand with, with a firm grip, looking him in the eyes, mm -hmm. and just different facets of becoming a man, not just the educational side, but the building side and incorporate that into becoming a man into the society. I hear some of the students are being recruited even in their sophomore year and receiving offers of up to $70,000 a year before they even graduate. Has this this surprised you? Um, it, it hasn't really surprised me, but it still surprises them <laughs> because the, 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 these guys are still young. So some of them grasp the, the, the income and salary, but I try to tell them that the average income of a male is between forty to fifty-seven thousand a year. These young men at seventeen are incorporating salaries between sixty to eighty thousand, depending on submarine welding, wow. nuclear fabrication, structural welding, and and they're starting this, you know, with no debt, nothing of what us as adults seem to acquire in, in our age. These young men are, are getting these salaries without any any means of that yet. And I hear, Marcos, you already have a full-time job lined up for this summer. Yes, yeah, I do. Um, it's called Holtec International. It's in Camden, New Jersey. Um, and they make nuclear containers. Mm. Um, and I'll be starting in July for, on July 14th. Wow. And I hear you have a question for Melody. What is it? Uh, yes. Um, I'm blessed to say that because of the welding program, I'll be, if I stick with this route, I'll be making um, 100000 by the time I'm 20 years old. Wow. And because of that, I'm planning on staying at my house, staying home, saving my money, but I'm going to have so much money. I really don't know what to do with it. So I was wondering, like, money tips from you. Like, what do you think I should do with it? Okay. That's wow, you're going to be flush, as we say. Flush. Well, yes. first of all, I have to say that this is welding college. This is fantastic. This is welding college. I mean, from what you've said, the amount of hours, the detail, the depth of it, 
And you get and, to show certification here. You get certified yes, here. Yes. Yeah. Which is a big yes. deal. Mm -hmm. um, and But the one other thing I want to say, which I think that when people think about trades, they think they are less than. I've never, ever thought of that. I actually even reject the idea of the notion of blue collar, white, white collar. collar. Yeah. I just don't like that. I think work is work and it all work is admirable. All work. And this is essential. These are essential jobs for our society. And so it's no wonder that they are, you would be in demand and you'd make this kind of money. Now, what I would tell you, being disciplined at this age around that kind of money coming into your hands is going to require a great effort. But if you are disciplined, you are going to be set for life because time is on your side with the ability that you have for that money to compound. And then also just the opportunity that you will have not to accumulate the debt that so many people are talking about, the fact that they have to dig out of. Can so you explain you are, compounding to Marcos? Marcos, you understand comp compounding? So compounding, not Warren Buffett really. calls it the, yeah. the eighth wonder of the world. So he said compound interest is magical because your money starts to work for you instead of you working for your money. So a very simple compounding example that I give in my book is would you rather have a penny that doubles every day for one month, 30 days, or a million dollars? Which one would you rather have? Uh, the penny. Right. The penny is over $5 million. And I explain how if it doubles every day, one cent is two cents, two cents is four cents, four cents is eight yeah. cents. Eight, eight, eight. And so that kind of compounding is magical. And it, the money starts to grow really fast. So because you're so young, and let's just say you work until you're 65, you have decades of money to compound, decades. And I actually looked at some math. I, I did some math on this of just something simple. If you put away $2,500 a year, just $2,500 a year, you only made 8%, only 8%, and it compounded for um, 25 years. It's almost $200,000, just $2,500 a year. So just, there's a wonderful calculator you can go to. There are all sorts of calculators you can go to where you can calculate returns. Now, what I would do if I were you starting, I would invest, first of all, if you get a full-time job and there's a 401k plan, a retirement plan, re invest there first because you get the tax advantage. You don't pay taxes on that money. And oftentimes they have a match, which is free money. So you don't want to walk away from free money ever. So you'll still have some discretionary money that you can invest, but first make sure you're maxing out on that 401k plan as much as you can possibly put in it. You start that now, I can tell you it's, it's magic. Then when you are starting to invest on your own, if you want to buy stocks, I would invest in things you know. So okay. what do you like? And why do you think it might be a good investment over and time? And how much should he invest or not invest in stocks? So first of all, I would... Because that's the question. When do you invest and what to invest in? Okay, so when you invest, you can invest at any time. I actually like investing for children. Yeah. And I like them to... If, if, if Everest likes Barbie, I want her to have Mattel. If yeah. she likes Sephora, LVMH. Okay. I can give you all of those examples. So is there anything in your life, like a lot of young people love, uh, video games... They love, that might lead you to Microsoft. You know, all of those, thinking about things that are in your life. Microsoft has been an amazing stock, as an example. Think of things in your life that you'd say, I understand this and therefore want to invest it. If you don't want to do that, you can buy a mutual fund or an ETF where a professional does it for you. But your, your point is invest in what you know or like. Correct. Yeah, so that you understand it, yes. I love the idea of just a small amount of money that you would invest in something that you know and like and you can just track it over time. I think that would be, be something that, that you'd really actually start to enjoy.